Hello, I'm Zoe, and I'm transgender, and I live in Bristol in England. And I've been on hormones now for just over a month, which is great. I was absolutely thrilled to be able to start my hormones, and already I start to feel some kind of tingling and differences in my breasts. No obvious physical changes, but the very fact that something's going on there is a great encouragement to me. And I am more prone to crying. Uh, I can see something or hear about something and I start to burst into tears, which is nice actually. I, I don't find that a problem and almost again encouraged that the, the treatment is working. As to whether it's doing things like um, affecting the hair growth, which I know it will do, is difficult for me to know because I anyhow have long waxed and shaved the hair off my body, so it's difficult to discern. But there we are, it's a month. Uh, my electrolysis on my beard is continuing and all I've got left now is a patch on the upper lip which is showing through my foundation by virtue of those black hairs remaining amongst all the grey ones in my beard. That doesn't mean that there isn't a lot, lot more to be done yet, but from my point of view at this early stage after just seven sessions is that it's getting easier with the makeup and that really matters to me. So that's really good as well. I have um, had to cope with difficulties with loneliness um, because it's a strange thing when you're a trans woman or indeed a trans person at all, I suppose, is that simply by being yourself, you cause this kind of chaos all around you in the family. And they're all scuttling around trying to rearrange their lives to cope with this new reality and finding it incredibly complicated and disruptive. And while they're doing that, I'm sort of saying, well, what about me? Where's me? Where's my emotional needs? And people are saying, yes, but you've got to understand it's very difficult for them. Yes, well, I'm sure it is. But what about me? Is a sort of feeling that I have. One of the big things that's been going on in the background has been the end of the period of the consultation by the government on matters related to transgender. And I had a letter published in the Guardian newspaper responding to what I thought was an extraordinarily illiberal um, leader in the Guardian the day before. I was very pleased it was published and the headline they gave was that uh, trans women uh, are not a threat to feminism. And I, I think that's the case. I don't think that people like me are seeking, have even the tiniest thought about trying to undermine all the progress that feminists have made in fighting the cause for women in this country and around the world, which of course they have. The difficulty is that the media, certainly The Guardian, I think, and others like The Economist, have um, been very much influenced, I think, by the radical feminists, who many of whom are academics and are very articulate, and they will talk to journalists and present their ideas, which are very, very unsympathetic to me, and it's actually upsetting and threatening. And when I wrote that letter, and I wasn't well at the time, I found it an emotionally difficult thing. I found it emotionally difficult to read that editorial. I found it hard to know that something similar was being published in the Times that same day. It's all really rather threatening and frightening external force. And I felt frightened in a way, in a different kind of way than I would do, say, to any political issue, which, although important to me, is kind of outside of me rather than the inside of me, the who I am and my identity. So I'm really hoping that the way in which the public media, the mainstream media, has responded to this business of whether or not people like me can self-identify as female rather than have to go through all these difficult businesses of seeing clinical psychologists and answering all these questions, waiting years to get approved, that that can be removed and therefore the humiliating aspect of it all can be removed. And I'm kind of fearful that the radical feminists, although very few in number, will be disproportionately influential in this debate. I just hope not, because the strange thing is that the women that I meet, the re what they would regard as real women, in inverted commas, who have a womb and a uterus and the right chromosomes, have almost all been unbelievably kind and lovely to me. It just doesn't compute. In the real world, uh, the people I know the women I know have been wonderful, and I count myself as very, very fortunate. 
And one final thing that's been very much on my mind is, uh, as a football fan, my team, Tranmere Rovers, who are having a great season this year, unusually for me, we're a third of the way through the season and I haven't yet seen a match. And in part, that's because I live a long way away from uh, Birkenhead, where they play, but it's also because my family are anxious about going with me to the ground because they don't want to be in my presence when they might hear someone say something unpleasant to me or that in terms of when they play away, closer to where I live in Bristol, uh, that I would be exposed to having to go around the whole mob, as you might say, of supporters of all kinds and with, may encounter some very transphobic people who might even cause me uh, to suffer some physical and certainly verbal abuse. And so I've avoided that. So I'm now determined to pluck up the courage uh, in the coming weeks and I will see them. I hope to see them later this month or certainly no later than next month because it matters to me but it's the only zone in my life really left where I'm afraid physically to present myself as I am as a woman. Well that's it for now. Talk to you soon.